This is an aerial photograph of the scene where President Kennedy was assassinated. This is Elm Street, Main Street, and Houston Street. Starting at Main and Houston Streets, we will identify the buildings surrounding the scene. This is the Dallas County Jail, Courthouse, and Records Building. Across Elm Street is the Dow Tech Smart Building. Across Houston Street is the Texas School Book Depository Building. This is the Triple Underpass, this is the Post Office Terminal Annex Building. These buildings across Houston Street had been demolished at the time of the assassination, and steelwork was up to 13 floors for the new county courthouse and jail. This is the old county courthouse. The center area is Dealey Plaza. The motorcade came down Main Street to Houston Street, and turn right to go over one block to Elm Street, and turn left. This was necessary so the motorcade could get to the Stemmons Expressway entrance on the right side of Elm Street. There's a concrete curb between Main and Elm Streets which prohibits Main Street traffic from crossing Elm Street to get to the Expressway entrance. The motorcade was in view of the assassin from the time it entered the Main and Houston Street intersection and remained in view until here, except for this area, when this tree blocked the view a few moments. Eight millimeter movie film of the entire assassination was taken by Abraham Zapruder, who was standing here. Additional films were taken by Mary Muchmore, who was standing here, and Orville Nix, who was standing here. The Muchmore and Nix movies did not include the entire assassination. The president's car was in this position when he was shot in the neck, and in this position when he was shot in the head. The following scene is a panoramic view taken from this point. It starts facing the Main and Houston Streets intersection and continues counterclockwise for 360 degrees. In the foreground, you see part of the back of the Dealey Memorial. The first building is the Dallas County Jail and Courthouse. The white building is the County Records Building. Across Elm Street is the Dow Tech Smart Building Across Houston Street is the Texas School Book Depository Building. The assassin used the window next to the top on the far right. Mr. Zapruder took the 8mm color movies of the assassination from the pavilion straight ahead. He was standing on a column about 4 feet high in front and to the left of the pavilion. This is the Elm Street underpass, Main Street underpass, and Commerce Street underpass, where it gets the name Triple Underpass. The center area between the pavilions is Dealey Plaza. The white building coming in view is the Post Office Terminal Annex Building, which faces Houston Street. The steelwork you see in the background is the new county courthouse, and the old building to the left is the old county courthouse. In the foreground is the back of another part of the Dealey Memorial, and we end at the Main and Houston Street intersection. This is the survey of the assassination scene. This is Elm Street, Houston Street, and Main Street. This is where Mr. Zapruder was standing. This is the sign that blocks the view of the president for a few seconds in the Zapruder film. This is the tree that blocks the view of the motorcade from the assassin's window for a few seconds. The window sill is 61 feet above the sidewalk, about 68 feet above this area where the president was shot in the neck, and 73 feet above this point where the president was shot in the head. The calculated distance from the windowsill to this area where the president was shot in the neck is about 180 feet. And to this point where the president was shot in the head, 265 feet. The car traveled about 85 feet between the two locations and decreased in elevation about five feet. The time span was between 4.8 and 5.6 seconds as determined by examination of the Zapruder film. The car was traveling about 11 miles per hour. With the camera facing straight ahead, we turn right off Main Street onto Houston Street and follow the motorcade route. The building in front of you is the Texas School Book Depository. We continue on Houston Street for one block and make a sharp turn to the left onto Elm Street. The black object you will see occasionally at the top of the picture is a hat that is being used to shade the camera lens. Shortly after we make the turn, you can see the sign that blocks the view of the president in Zapruder's movie. 
The entrance to the Texas School Book Depository is straight ahead. As we complete the turn onto Elm Street, we see the Stemmons freeway sign straight ahead. The tree blocks the view of the motorcade from the window in this area for a split second. In a moment, you will be able to see the curb through the underpass on the left that prohibits Main Street traffic from crossing Elm Street to enter the expressways. This curb continues past the entrances. Straight ahead, you can see the entrances to Stemmons and Thornton expressways. The motorcade turned right onto Stemmons expressway. From the main and Houston Street intersection, we will keep the camera on the window used by the assassin until after we have passed the location of the president's car at the time he was shot in the head. The assassin used the window on the far right, next to the top, on the same level as the oval-shaped windows. By using photographs taken seconds after the assassination, the position of the windows in the depository have been reconstructed. We lose the window for a second during a sharp turn from Houston Street to Elm Street. In a moment, you can see the tree blocking the view for a split second as we pass under it. The bullet that struck the president in the neck was fired shortly after the tree passes out of view. And the bullet that struck the president in the head was fired between 4.8 and 5.6 seconds later. The car traveled approximately 85 feet between the two shots. This is a copy of the Dallas Police Department drawing of the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository. The building is 97 feet by 97 feet and has 36 somewhat evenly spaced columns. Elm Street is at the bottom of the drawing. Houston Street is to the right. The assassination took place from here. These are two service elevators, one facing west and the other east. This is the stairway going up and the stairway going down. The gun was found here, in front of the down stairway. The following scene is a panoramic view taken from here, looking in this direction, and continues around to the service elevator here. Notice the condition of the boxes on the sixth floor as we pan around to the left. The assassination took place from the opposite corner of the building from where this scene was filmed. The stairway is behind us, and as you see, it's impossible to see anything in the opposite corner of the building. Oswald's duties as an employee of the depository required him to frequent the sixth floor while filling orders and delivering the filled orders to the first floor shipping area. Straight ahead is the main aisle on the north side of the building. It has several aisles that lead off to the right and the front of the building. We continue around until the west elevator is in view. This is the drawing of the sixth floor again. The next scenes will start here and continue down the front of the building, showing the reconstructed position of the windows and the condition of the boxes along the Elm Street side of the building. And end with a view out of this window. It will also show the floor repairs being conducted in this area, which required boxes to be moved down here, which helped conceal the assassin's window. A view taken from here, looking down the front of the building, will show Agent Howlett standing up and sitting down to show concealment. Starting at the window used by the assassin, we will show the reconstructed position of the windows as well as the positions of the boxes along the Elm Street side of the building. You will notice that the first two sets of windows shown in this scene offer considerable protective cover for hiding someone, while the rest of the windows along Elm Street are clear of any boxes. We will end this scene with a view out of the window at the far end of the building. The motorcade was in the center lane of Elm Street in front of the flowers on the right when the president was shot in the head and about 85 feet to the left of the flowers when he was shot in the neck. These are floor repairs that were started in the southwest corner of the building that required a quantity of boxes to be moved to the southeast corner which provided cover for the assassin. Employees of the school book depository were placing plywood over the old floor whenever they had time between filling orders. We see Agent Hallett standing in the area used by the assassin. When he sits down, we see that he's completely concealed by the boxes. This scene was photographed from the west end of the building looking east. This is a drawing of the sixth floor again. 
The next scene will include a short panoramic view taken from here, showing the condition of the boxes in this area. After that, there will be scenes taken from here, looking in this direction, and from this point, looking in this direction. Then there will be a view out of the window, over the boxes, followed by simulated motorcades viewed out of the window. The window on the left, on the other side of these boxes, is the one used by the assassin. Notice the position of the boxes as we turn slightly to the right. These pictures were taken from eye level by a man five feet, eight and a half inches tall. This is the reconstructed position of the boxes at the window. Elm Street is to the right. A paper wrapper was found in the corner behind the pipes, and it is believed this paper was used to wrap the gun. Agent Howlett is sitting in the position. It is believed the assassin did, and he is pointing in the direction the rifle would have been pointed. The right index fingerprint and left palm print of Lee Harvey Oswald were found on the right and left sides of the box immediately in front of Agent Howlett. The right palm print of Lee Harvey Oswald was found on the right side of the box on which Agent Howlett is sitting. Howlett is pointing in the direction the rifle would have been pointed. Notice how low the window is to the floor. We look out of the window over the reconstructed position of the boxes for a few seconds before we remove the boxes to photograph the simulated motorcade. This is a simulated motorcade as it turns from Maine onto Houston Street. The two motorcycle policemen are the two men who were in the same relative position to the president's car at the time of the assassination. They assisted in determining the approximate speed of the president's car during the filming of these scenes. As you will notice in this scene, the turn from Houston onto Elm Street is quite sharp. The two motorcycle policemen said the turn was so slow they had trouble keeping their balance. In a moment, you can see the tree blocking the view of the car for a split second. The shot that struck the president's neck occurred shortly after the car comes into view from behind the tree, and the shot that struck his head when he was about 85 feet down the road. This is a photograph from the reenactment made for the president's commission using the Secret Service follow-up car. The two men have been positioned in the locations of President Kennedy and Governor Connolly, as closely as possible by use of the Zapruder movie. The scope crosshairs are located at the entrance point of the shot that struck the president's neck. Notice the position of the man simulating Governor Connolly. The commission concluded that the bullet that exited the president's neck entered Governor Connolly. This photograph shows the reconstructed positions of President Kennedy and Governor Connolly at the time the bullet struck the president's head. This view of the simulated motorcade is through a four-power, 18-millimeter Ordnance Optical Incorporated rifle scope, the same make and model scope that was used by the assassin. You can see the degree of amplification offered by the scope by looking at the people outside of the scope as well as the parked cars. It is impossible to show in a movie the scale dimensions of everything exactly as observed out of the window due to the various distances from projector to screen. However, these scenes viewed through the scope give you the same field of view as that the assassin saw through his scope. No attempt was made to keep the crosshairs of the scope on the exact points the shots entered the president. The car used here is a Lincoln Continental convertible, which is considerably shorter than the president's car. Also, the fact that Governor Connolly, seated in the jump seat, would be closer to the president and a little more to the left than the man seated in the front seat of the car in these scenes. This is the simulated motorcade in slow motion. The commission report says there was no indication that a bullet struck any part of the interior of the presidential limousine, with the exception of the cracking of the windshield and the dent on the windshield chrome. Neither of these points of damage could have been caused by the bullet which exited the president's neck at a velocity of about 1,775 feet per second as determined by test. If the trajectory had permitted the bullet to strike the windshield or windshield chrome, the bullet would have penetrated it and traveled a substantial distance down the road unless it struck some other object en route. Therefore, the bullet probably passed through Governor Connolly's body and a subsequent shot penetrated the president's head. No other shot struck any part of the automobile and three shots were fired. So it follows that one shot probably missed the car and its occupants. The evidence is inconclusive as to whether it was the first, second, or third shot that missed. 
Tests conducted for the President's Commission indicated that 2.3 seconds was required to operate the bolt-action rifle between shots. Keep in mind that projector speed will vary, so the times may vary slightly. But immediately following this scene, we will have a scene 5.6 seconds long. This is the longest time span the Commission report stated in which the assassination could have occurred. The scene will start as the car exits from behind the tree and end 5.6 seconds later. There will be a beep tone at 4.8 seconds, which is the shortest time span the commission report stated in which the assassination could have occurred. This is the drawing of the sixth floor again. While it is not positively known what route the assassin took in leaving the window, Agent Howlett simulates this exit by the clearest route in this direction, hides the gun, and exits down the stairway. Agent Howlett stands up from behind the boxes and with a stick in his hand simulating the rifle, he exits the assassination window over the route believed to have been used by Oswald. While it is not definitely known what route was taken, this is the quickest and easiest route from the window to where the rifle was found. Agent Hallett walked this route in a fast walk for the President's Commission in 1 minute and 14 seconds, which was within 3 seconds of the time required for Dallas Police Officer Baker to reach the second floor. Officer Baker testified that he saw something through the glass in the door on the second floor or saw the door closing as he came up the stairway to the second floor. This was the reason he turned and went into the employee's lunchroom where he confronted Oswald. The President's Commission established that both of the elevators were on the fifth floor, so Oswald had to use the stairway to get from the sixth floor to the second floor. Agent Howlett makes a turn to the right and back to the left in front of the west elevator. And as he approaches the down stairway, he places the stick in the location where the gun was found and exits the down stairway. Agent Bailey exits the stairway on the second floor and walks to the door leading to the offices. Notice the glass in the door that Officer Baker talked about. We turn left and walk into the employee lunchroom where Officer Baker confronted Oswald. The solid lines are the known routes and the broken lines the assumed routes taken by Oswald on his escape from the Texas School Book Depository building. All times are approximate. According to the reconstruction of time and events by the President's Commission, Oswald left the building about 12.33 p.m., three minutes after the assassination. He walked east on Elm Street to the corner of Elm and Murphy Streets, a distance of four-tenths of a mile. Boarded a bus at 12.40 p.m. that was going west on Elm Street. He remained on the bus about four minutes and exited between Lamar and Poydras Streets after traveling a little less than two-tenths of a mile. Walked two-tenths of a mile to where he boarded a taxi cab at 12.48 p.m. The cab followed this route over the Houston Street Viaduct, turned left onto Beckley, and let Oswald out near the Beckley and Neely Street intersection at 12.54 p.m. after traveling a distance of two and four-tenths miles. Oswald had passed his rooming house by three-tenths of a mile. He entered the rooming house at 1 p.m. and left at 1.03 p.m. zipping up his jacket. His next known location was when he shot Dallas Patrolman J.D. Tippett near 10th and Patton Streets at 1.16 p.m., a distance of nine-tenths of a mile from his rooming house. He ran west on 10th Street and turned south on Patton Street and back west on Jefferson Street. Witnesses lost him here in the vicinity of a gasoline service station. His jacket was later found in the parking lot behind the service station, two-tenths of a mile from the Tippett shooting. Oswald was later observed acting in a suspicious manner about 150 feet from the Texas theater and was observed entering the theater at 1.40 p.m. without paying. He was apprehended in the theater six-tenths of a mile from the Tippett shooting at 1.50 p.m. Thirty-four minutes after the Tippett shooting and one hour and twenty minutes after the assassination of President Kennedy. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, 
please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.